Hi, it's been a while since I've done a sit down video. Also, can we please excuse the fact that my mouth is just not loving life? My skin does not like COVID-19 and mask. Just thought I'd address it, but also now I've addressed it, it's probably all you're gonna look at and that is not something I want to happen. So just let's not. Everything in my life has changed. Honestly, shove it in people's faces. What I want to promote, Gymshark has changed my life. Just setting yourself up for failure. Become a better version of yourself. Insane amount of mental stability. Basically, for the last year, hello, welcome, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a another fitness journey video but i've officially hit a year and i wanted to share some tips things i've learned basically a lot of things i've learned to help you if you're just starting out or just help you not make the mistakes that i've made i feel like you're very zoomed out let me just you can come a little bit closer little backstory throughout my life i've had weight issues eating issues i struggled with binge eating disorder for quite a few years on and off i struggled with my weight for quite a few years and last february i just kind of got sick of it i was not happy with myself i was not happy with the life i was living and i just decided one day you know what no longer is this gonna happen so i woke up one day and chose to change my life. I now realise that that was actually a very long process leading up to it. Like it didn't, it was not just like I woke up one day, I was like, oh, you know what, let's switch everything up. It had been building for about six years. So back in February, 2021, I started off by just eating smaller meals and trying to limit how much I snack because I was very much a snacker. I snacked all the time. I was snacking constantly. And then I decided to start tracking. I downloaded my fitness pal and I went on a very low, calorie diet which I feel like most people do because I just thought the less I eat the better from February to June I want to say I had quite a toxic time I suffered with I didn't even know just really bad eating I would not eat I was depriving myself of a lot of food I was restricting myself a lot I was a slave to my fitness pal I also started working out in March I think and I did dance workouts so I was tracking and eating very little calories and working out in March I had my 18th birthday I found out I was lactose intolerant on my 18th birthday I also went back to being veggie in between my no yeah I went veggie kind of after my birthday and then in June I saw that you shouldn't be in a diet for longer than three months that's kind of what stopped my disorderly eating kind of I've had a bit of a struggle with food over the last year in June I went on a bulk but it wasn't actually a bulk it actually just ended up being me reverse dieting I went from one point seven k calories to 2.6 in the space of about four weeks and i didn't gain any weight i really was hoping to gain like some muscle and blah blah blah. i didn't gain any weight whatsoever so i actually just reverse dieted also i started going to the gym in june weight training mainly i didn't really do any cardio until like november october to november i tried to do a cut again didn't work i lasted like two weeks and hated it and then november to january is when i started incorporating no tracking days throughout september to october my relationship with food and tracking was a lot better, but it definitely wasn't the best. And then in November and December, I had more days of not tracking, got more comfortable with it. I also went vegan in November. And then in January, I started to stop tracking. I think, honestly, I'm trying to remember. Basically, for the last year, I had a bit of an eating disorder. Then I reverse dieted for a month, increased my calories by almost a thousand calories. I have been weight training, progressive overloads. I work out six days a week. Currently now, I don't track. I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't eat dairy, obviously. I do cardio three days a week. That's just walking on the treadmill for 30 minutes on incline 12 at speed four. I have lost about 10 kilos in a year. The reason I stopped tracking is because I don't have any specific goals for my body. That's why I stopped tracking and also I really wanted to heal my relationship with food the last month or two I was just like you know what that needs to be my main priority and now it is March I have almost a completely healthy relationship with food I have only not been tracking for like a month so it is definitely still a journey I'm not on 2.6 calorie 2.6 k calories anymore I don't actually have a clue how much I'm eating and also I don't want to share numbers because everyone's numbers are different I was only sharing those numbers because I went from such a drastic change 
change, but I'm definitely still on the journey to healing my relationship with food, but it is the best it's been, like I said, since I was about nine. I'm really happy. I'm working towards a very healthy relationship with food and I'm feeling amazing. But yeah, that was basically what I did. I have a lot of videos on my channel of what I eat, my different training, blah, blah, blah. I weight train for, 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 for oh, wow. And that's what I do now. But the main focus of this video was to share my tips. Um, I've come a long way in a year. But there's a lot of things that I did which I don't want anyone else to do. So I'm just, I wanna share some, some tips. Number one, if you have a healthy relationship with food already, do not stop tracking. Don't track unless you genuinely feel like it would help you or you kind of need to, I guess. I am glad I tracked because I learned so much about food. I learned about nutrients. The reason why intuitively eating has been so easy for me now is because I know roughly how much I'm eating due to tracking. I know how many calories are in different things. If you have a healthy relationship with food, either don't track or track kind of loosely just to see kind of roughly what you're eating each day. And if you don't want to track, I fully understand that it's a lot of effort to track. Like honestly, one of the biggest reasons I stopped tracking was because it was just so tedious. If you don't want to track or you don't feel like you need to track, just aim for... Oh, my Misfits parcel's coming. Aim for obviously a healthy diet. I believe in balance and I believe that you should not restrict yourself. Just aim for a healthy diet, you know, healthy and balanced. You get your good stuff in, but also you treat yourself. But yeah, just if you don't need to track or don't feel like tracking would be good for you, don't. Next, and this is not in any specific order, I've just realized I've written these down in a really weird order, but next is to have a workout split. This is mainly for people who go to the gym, but also if you do do home workouts, then this can work as well. But something I've really enjoyed is having a workout split to target everywhere. My workout split is Monday legs, Tuesday push, Wednesday legs, Thursday pull, Friday rest, Saturday legs, Sunday kind of full upper body and cardio. Oh, and I do cardio on Tuesday and Thursdays too. Obviously I go to the gym a lot. I'm not suggesting that everyone should be doing six days a week, but having your workout split, just make sure you target everywhere. So find a workout split and tailor it to how many times you can go to the gym. See what works for you. Next, and this is going back to the food thing. I should have done this second, but don't have cheat meals or cheat days or days off. I think cheat days, cheat meals, all of that stuff like categorizing meals and foods into bad and good. I think that's so unbelievably unhealthy. Like it's not cheating to have a meal out or have a pizza or have, you know, that treat. Like that's not a cheat. A diet is meant to be balanced. You're not meant to be eating super clean all the time and then having, you know, your treats. You should have your treats incorporated in your everyday diet because it makes you think that what you're doing is like bad and it's not you know you can have treats you can have food which isn't deemed than you know most healthy and blah 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 just enjoy your diet next is to switch it up but don't switch it up too much i've been known to like go from one extreme to like the complete opposite extreme and my body does not know what's going on so switch up your meals what workouts you're doing your workout split your routine like switch it up but in a way that isn't like like completely changing it. I like to switch up my workout split, honestly, every like eight to 12 weeks, just cause I get bored of it being like, okay, Monday now I'm doing glutes again. You know, I don't like the repetitiveness of it, to be honest, I do like to switch it up because that's just what keeps it interesting for me. Switching up workout wear is also vital, but I'm too broke to afford any. New workout wear is, there's nothing quite like putting on a new gym set, but switching up just everything, but not too much. It makes things interesting. Also, it makes you realize what you love. Next, don't follow toxic people. Do not follow those fitness influencers who are constantly sucking in and posing in these really interesting ways. Promoting super low calorie, fasting, like just don't follow toxic people. For example, I'm not a toxic person. Um, so you should follow my Instagram, but I follow a lot of people who are just very real I was very guilty of following a lot of like unrealistic fitness people and when you're seeing that on your feed it messes with your mind genuinely i strongly recommend following my instagram and also there's a lot of people i follow maybe look at the people i follow millie g underscore fit she's one of my favorites anna archer fitness lucy davis fit there's a lot of people going back to the food i really i didn't put this in a good order but going back to food don't focus on low calorie foods and being super low calorie focus on health what i did at the start 
I would just eat loads of low calorie foods, but it actually obviously added up because if you eat loads of low calorie, it will end up being quite a few calories because you've eaten more low calorie than if you just had a bigger, denser calorie meal or snack, it would actually fill you up. I hate diets. I hate keto, paleo. Is that a diet or is that like a vegan, vegetarian type of diet. I hate any sort of diets though. Any sort of restrictive diets, I just, I really hate them. If they work for some people, they work for some people. I just don't like promoting diets. I hate the whole sin thing, like categorizing foods like that. I just think it messes with you mentally. I've said it a lot in this video, but just what I want to promote is eating just a healthy, balanced diet. If you are trying to lose weight, obviously cutting is going to help you, but that does not mean you should go on some stupid restrictive diet. It just means have a one-to-one -one discussion with a PT or a nutritionist or a doctor, see where your maintenance calories are at and then cut them slightly and lose weight without being sinful or, you know, no carbs at all. I just don't like those diets. Next, and I've already said this, but get good active wear. I'm not joking. Gymshark has changed my life. That sounds so sad, but Gymshark has changed my life because without Gymshark, I would not have gone to the gym. I would not have started my fitness journey or continued it. I probably would have started it, but I wouldn't have continued it. I wouldn't have been able to feel so confident. Like genuinely, my favorite time is when I'm wearing my favorite gym wear in the gym, doing legs or doing, actually I do prefer upper body at the moment, not doing legs at the moment. Listening to my music and just feeling like I am that girl. I don't want to swear on my channel. Just feeling like I'm literally the most unbeatable person in the world. And I wouldn't be able to feel like that without my Gymshark. Next is to get your protein in. I use my vegan protein snacks, powders. One, I love it. And also I do have a very high protein diet, but get your protein in. You don't have to have protein powders and protein snacks. I just strongly recommend them because they are really yummy. But make sure that you have quite a lot of protein in your diet. It helps the gains and also protein is the most filling nutrient. Do your research on what you eat and what like the macros are for it. Also that's another way of like not tracking but knowing what you're eating. If you have quite a similar diet, like most of the time you're eating the same things, if you kind of research into what those foods are kind of made up of like what the protein, carbs and fats are like in them. That's another really good way of figuring out what type of things you're eating. Another one is to not set time goals. Any specific goals actually, unless you're genuinely working towards something. Something I've learned a lot over the last year in fitness and in general is setting time goals is just setting yourself up for failure completely last tip make a personality trait if you need to make the gym your life up until about september last year the gym and being a little healthy gal was my only personality trait but if you need to scream and shout about how much you love the gym and how amazing you're doing and how proud you are of yourself do it. Honestly, shove it in people's faces. It's a big decision and big thing to do to decide to start your fitness journey and become a better version of yourself and better your life. You should be proud of it. Like, do not belittle how well you're doing. It's an amazing thing to do and you're doing an amazing thing and you should be proud of yourself and you should not just push it to the side. And that goes for anything, not just going to gym, that goes to just bettering your life. If you've picked up a habit or picked up doing something, whatever it is that you're proud of, something that we all do way too much is make our achievements seem a lot smaller than they are. A lot of us don't big ourselves up enough. Everything in my life has changed and I'm extremely proud of myself. I've gained an insane amount of confidence, insane amount of mental stability, insane amount of love for myself, self-worth. I love my life, I love myself, I love what I do and I'm very very proud of myself. So if you're doing something which you're proud of, do not push it to the side and seem what you're doing is smaller than it is. Even if it may be small to someone else, it may be massive to you. And that is my TED talk.